So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about box cutter and its debug mode. So right now I'm in box cutter, I'm in cut, set to box, and I'm just going to draw a box. And we're going to press tab and pause it right here. And we can, of course, adjust our dots and mess with the bevel and press V and array it and do the things we would usually do with our hotkeys. But let's say we want to actually look at this cutter while it's live and expect the modifiers. Well, if I go over the modifier or if I hover over the outliner and I attempt to click on cutter or I attempt to change any of the buttons, you can see that during the draw state that we're mainly locked in. And that's because we want the user experience to be clean and free of uh, obscuring things um, because there's a lot of madness that can happen if you start playing around and messing with things. And first and foremost, we want your cut to be successful. So we'll just uh, click to apply this. And what I'm gonna do is press F4 and bring up my preferences. And in the box cutter preps, at the very bottom is a debug option. And by enabling this, it will allow box cutter to basically perform as it does for us whenever we're testing it and using it internally. This isn't something I'm recommending to you to users by any means, but when it comes to troubleshooting, it does allow you to put box cutter in a state that's more assistive towards troubleshooting. So, you know, problems happen, but we, we always want to uh, try to get to the bottom of why they happen so that we can solve them properly because uh, a support issue just saying, I has problem is um, simply too vague for us to be able to act off of. And for me, I'm just going to go back to work on what I'm doing until I can get more information. But while we have this pause, I'm going to click on cutter and notice that the shape darkened out, but we can still go in and actually adjust the dots. It just inverts it but we can go to the modifier panel. We can look at what modifiers are in place. So we can see that the welds here and I actually have my suspicions about the new smart weld system at this time. So I was actually playing with debug earlier, trying to uh, diagnose a problem internally so I could um, properly send it up to the next level properly. But we can actually go in here and do all sorts of things. I mean, you can add a modifier if you want and just put an array on it. You can go in here, add another array and we'll set that to a zero put it to one on the next column. And here we are just setting up a grid array. So this is something that I'm always contemplating how we can do it um, in actuality, you know, via the hotkeys and the systems that we have. But uh, debug can be kind of handy for you to get unusual things out of box cutter that you normally wouldn't be able to get with it being in its normal non-debug state. So we can even go up to the top, make sure our origin point is set to the center. And that means that we can scale this down, press G, move it over and we're losing our surface, so we'll repenetrate. We can go back under array and just add more and go here and add more as well. Just showing us how to get a little bit more out of array inside of box cutter, just playing a little bit with debug mode. So if you're an advanced user of box cutter, then by all means, I definitely recommend using debug mode because whenever you look at the console, it'll display information letting you know like, um, there is an error here. So whenever you're reporting it to us, you can actually give us more detailed information. It's actually assistive towards making this the best tool possible. So, you know, while we're still in debug mode, sometimes I forget about debug mode and I'm just using it in videos when I'm really not supposed to, but to just show it again, we'll just press V shift R to reset. And it looks like our last array was pretty expensive on this as a cutter, but that's fine. We'll just roll that in. And I spend a lot of time in debug mode, just pondering things. It's my uh, pondering state in a way. So here we have our cube set up. We'll just select our cutter. And we see that, you know, for some reason, strangely, we get a little bit of performance back. Um, really it's repeating this heavily arrayed object over and over and cutting it in as a Boolean. Boolean's just, they have their limits, of course. So we'll just press uh, tab and also jump that up and we'll just turn this into a grid array as well because what better way to uh, wrap up this video talking about debug than at least showing something that normally isn't even accessible in box cutter and you can see why it isn't because of the uh, performance hangs that happen here I mean if we were in um, pause mode it would be another story we could click and just apply this and it applied and so we go in again Except this time, I'm actually going to draw the shape and we'll bring it in, press B, tab, go over to our modifier panel and we'll just array it just like before. Just having some fun being random with box cutter. This is by no means a tutorial on how to work this way. Um, that would be a nightmare. 
So we'll put zero, one, send it to the next column and we'll grid this up. And there we go. And just click to apply. And you see that it'll come to life and take forth uh, the cuts on the mesh. So that was just it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about debug mode and why it's a thing in box cutter and how it can uh, change your experience a little bit by allowing you to actually touch the cutters during the cut process. Um, to tie this video off even better, we can press Control N, make a new file. And I'm just going to draw a shape with Ngon. And I'm just going to right click after putting the last point there. And we're just going to extrude. And we can select this cutter and just look at what modifiers are going on it. And this is the situation that I'm actually tracking as far as bugs are concerned right now. I believe that there's a case in which the weld is supposed to pop up here, but it's actually not popping up in Ngon versus if I press D and draw a box and we select our cutter and we're just looking at it, we can see that as I bring the clamp in, it actually is affecting box, but isn't affecting Ngon. So, you know, with box cutter, there's always more work to be done whenever it comes to refining these tools and making them better. But for that reason, I'm glad that debug mode was actually added to box cutter for us to be able to have a state in which we can troubleshoot and get down to the nitty gritty of why issues occur. Because right here we see that the mesh is um, disappearing and that's because without the uh, interjection of a weld, it's not gonna work. So at the very beginning, I was talking about a smart weld situation that I was tracking. Here I am finding the solution. So now I know that up to the team, I need to let them know, hey, we gotta get Ingon also capable of using Smart Weld just as adequately as Box does. But with that, I can wrap up this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.